Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going through Art of Electronics exercise 2.16. And for this exercise, we need to design a tuned NPN amplifier stage. We've been given a number of parameters in the circuit. So first of all, we need one milliamp quiescent current. The tuning needs to be 400 kilohertz. We have a 15 volt power supply, so that's positive only. And we need to have a bypassed RE resistor, which is the resistor connected to the emitter stage and we need to have a AC coupled input. So let's get started. As you can see, I've got a children's board to show you all the calculations. So on the board now, you've got the circuit that we need to design for this question. Obviously all the component values have not been calculated yet. So we have a 15 volt power supply. We have a AC coupled input with this capacitor and the two resistors as well. The emitter resistor will also play a part, but we're gonna ignore that for the calculation of the filter as it's not that important. We have a bypassed emitter resistor over here. So the bypass basically means this capacitor over here. We have also been given some of the component values. So we've been given the ply, which is 15 volts. We have been given the value for the resistor, which is 6.2 kilo ohms. And we've been given the value for the inductor, which is one millihenry. We also know that we need a quiescent current of one milliamp. So that's the current flowing down this path over here. And that needs to be one milliamp when there's no input signal or when it's just idling, if that makes sense. So let me write those values down now. We can work out the components of this circuit in a number of different ways, in different orders, if that makes sense. So we don't have to go first for anything, really, except for the potential divider for the biasing voltage. So we need to calculate the emitter resistor before we do that. So first of all, what we're going to do is calculate the capacitor value on our RLC part of the circuit. So that's this section over here. So the equation for the resonance of a RLC circuit, I'll put on the screen now. And what we're going to do is basically rearrange that equation to get C by itself. Then we can put in all the numbers for the components that we do know. For example, the inductor value and the resonance frequency, which is 100 kilohertz, and the inductance value is 1 millihenry. So the equation for the resonance of an RLC circuit, where we basically are assuming the R doesn't exist, so LC circuit, is given by this equation over here, which is one over two pi and the square root of LC. Now, if we rearrange this equation, we basically get our C by itself. So we can rearrange this equation to get C by itself in order to calculate the component value. Obviously, we know the value of L. So what we're gonna do is take two pi to the other side first, then we're going to invert both of them. And finally, we're gonna take the square root out by squaring both sides. And then we can divide the whole thing by L and we get value basically C is equal to the square of one over two pi F naught and all of that divided by L. Now, if we plug in all the numbers, basically F naught being 100 kilohertz and L being 0 0.001 or one millihenry, we basically get a capacitance value of 2.53 nanofarads. So that's basically plugging in all the values in this equation over here. Now to calculate the value for R2, the book tells us that the value for R2 or the RE resistor should be roughly 10th of the R1 resistor over here. So R1 is 6,200 ohms. So what we're going to do is R2, we're going to make that equal to 620 ohms. Now that we know the value of R2, we know that we need a quiescent current of 1 milliamp that's flowing through this circuit over here. So what we can do is calculate the voltage that we need at the VE junction, which is basically over here. And that is V equals IR, I being 1 milliamp as given in the question and R is 620 ohms. So that gives us a VE voltage of 620 millivolts. So if we have 620 millivolts over here, we know the voltage across this junction is going to be 700 millivolts. So we can calculate what our VB is going to be, which is basically 620 plus 700, which gives us 1.32 volts on our base. What we should do next is tune R3 and R4 such that we create 1.32 volts over here. So obviously that's just a simple potential divider calculation, so I won't go through that in much detail. But what you should be concerned with as well when deciding the components value for these two is that we have enough current going down here so that it is not affected significantly by the current that's flowing in this direction into the base. So obviously that's gonna be 100 times, approximately 100 times less. So if you have one milliamp flowing in this direction, 
the current flowing into here will be 100 microamps. So we want at least one milliamp flowing down this path over here. So we can decide our R3 and R4 total value so that it gives you at least one milliamp with a 15 volt power supply. When those two values are fixed, we can calculate our C3 value, which is basically just a high pass filter. So we've been through high pass filters many times on this channel before, so I won't go through the calculations for that. But yeah, there's many online calculators available as well. So obviously you've got the value for the R3 and R4. They appear in parallel for the RC equation on the high pass filter calculation. So that's what you should do in order to calculate the capacitance value for C3. Now the cutoff frequency for the high pass filter should be such that we are not attenuating 100 kilohertz. So let's say we set our 100 kilohertz somewhere around here so that we're not reducing the amplitude for that particular frequency. So we can set that to anything we like. Maybe 50 kilohertz would be a good value so that you know we don't have any of this at the 100 kilohertz if that's what we care about. Obviously that depends application to application. Now in order to calculate the value for C2, Basically, we need to make the impedance of C2 small at the lowest frequency of interest. So basically, in this case, it would be 100 kilohertz. Com when compared to RE, or in that lowercase e, so basically the intrinsic emitter resistance, which is 26, I think, ohms, or maybe 25 ohms. So we need to make the impedance of C2 at 100 kilohertz much less than the intrinsic emitter resistance. So we're going to aim for like 2.5 ohms. But you could go smaller. I think there are some suggestions in the book as well. So what I'm going to do is calculate the value for C2 using the reactance equation. So the reactance of a capacitor is 1 over 2 pi Fd. So let's say we make the reactance at 100 kilohertz 2.5 ohms. So 10 times smaller than the intrinsic emitter resistance. Then we can plug in the rest of the numbers. So we know F is 100 kilohertz. And rearranging the equation we can calculate C. So now I'm going to switch over to the computer, um, show you a simulation of this on LT Spice, and show you all the component values that I've calculated. Basically for R3, R4, C3, so a high pass filter and the emitter bypass capacitor as well. And the emitter bypass capacitor C2. So just switching over to the computer now, um, you can see on the screen I've got all the components that we calculated. Basically our capacitance value is 2.53 nanofarads. We calculated C3 as well. Now the equation I used for that was Xc equals 1 over 2 pi Fc and then rearranging that for C like I showed you on the whiteboard. Obviously um, for the Xc value I was aiming for 2.5 ohms which is a tenth of the 25 intrinsic emitter resistance that we have. With a target of 2.5 ohms I was getting a capacitance value of 636 nanofarads. So the book suggests that we should go smaller then one tenth. So I've just basically gone for the closest value up, basically, which is one microfarad. So that's what I've put down for C3. Obviously, we calculated R3 together. Now for the R1 and R2 value, what I've done is set the total value of these two such that we have one milliamp flowing down this path. So obviously we have 15 volts and to get one milliamp, the total value needs to be 15 kilo ohms. And then what I've done is I need to get 1.32 volts over here. So set that basically to be 1,320 ohms and 13,680 ohms up here, which will give me 1.32 volts up here. Now, both of these in parallel form a RC filter with this capacitor over here. Now, both of these in parallel give me about 1,200 ohms. And I've basically calculated the cutoff frequency to be about 50 kilohertz, 60 kilohertz, and just picked the closest available value. So in this case, that's 2.2 nanofarads. So that's the value I've chosen for my AC coupling capacitor, C1. So we have 2.2 nanofarads capacitor over here. Now in the simulation, I'm gonna go through two different modes. So we've got a transient simulation and then we've got an AC simulation as well, which is over frequency, which is going to be a little bit better in terms of showing you what this circuit achieves. So first of all, let's just do this one. Now you can see on the blue line, which is just barely visible down here. You have one volt input signal and the output signal, which is over here. You can see our signal is being amplified by a large amount, basically. So you can see it's going up to all the way up to 40 volts. 
And all of these components do play a part in that. You can see that the base oscillates around the 1.32 volts that we basically calculated for this point. And the collector basically goes from 0 volts, which I think it's hitting the lower limit, all the way up to 28, 30 volts or 2 times our power supply. So 2 times power supply is quite important because I think that's what's suggested in the book as well. So in the book on page 99, Additional bonuses are the possibility of peak to peak output swings of two times the power supply. Now switching over to the more interesting simulation, which is basically the AC simulation. So it's in dBs right now. So I'm just going to put it into linear. And on over here, you can see that we are getting our peak amplitude at 100 kilohertz, roughly. Obviously, in this case, it's 99.34 kilohertz. But that's just because of component tolerances and things like that. So what was the point of this circuit? Well, basically what we're looking at is how amplifiers can be optimized to operate at a specific frequency or frequency range. So in this case, obviously that was 100 kilohertz. So tuned amplifiers um, using NPN transistors are very important in amplification, obviously for specific frequencies and then which, you know, you can use them for radio receivers, transmit. And I think the main goal is to achieve be better signal um, selectivity and you can tune your gain finely for you know, a very specific range as we saw. Uh, we achieved that by obviously tuning the LC part of the component of the circuit. So what we basically had was a, was basically like a filter. So, you know, we got rid of all the low frequencies and the high frequencies and we amplified the 100 kilohertz range. So we basically got a bandpass filter with with a gain um, so that's that's why it's useful. So, you know, if you're receiving, let's say 2.4 gigahertz then you can just amplify that 2.4 gigahertz signal and get rid of everything else. So that's why that's important. Um, if you have any other uses for this or if you want to explain that in a different way, co uh, please comment down below so you can share your knowledge with others as well. So thank you for watching today. If you like the content, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and share this with your friends. Bye for now.